Good evening to our Facebook audience. I'm Linda Winkles and I'll be your MC. Thanks for joining us tonight at Fort Wainwright's Virtual Arctic Community Information Exchange for the month of November. We have a great agenda scheduled for this evening. Viewers are welcome to ask questions about the topics presented tonight. Community discussion topics for tonight include snow removal, welcome to winter, holiday assistance program, Thanksgiving meal, birch hill, the, and the ice rink. Following these presentations, Director of Family and Morale, Welfare and Recreation, Medic Alaska, North Haven Communities, Exchange, and DECA will present information of interest. Tonight's Arctic Community Information Exchange is hosted by United States Army Garrison Commander Colonel Christopher Ruga. Colonel Ruga, over to you, sir, for welcome remarks. Thanks, Linda. Uh, so, like Linda said, there's a lot of great information we got tonight, and welcome to the uh, November um, Arctic Info X. Um, before I turn it over to the team uh, to share all that great information, I got three items that I'd like to uh, discuss directly. One is as we uh, get ready for Veterans Day, um, just want to ex express my appreciation and gratitude for all the veterans out there. And as we take a moment to pause on Veterans Day, I ask everybody in our military community uh, to stop and, and remember those who are currently serving, those amongst our community that are serving, and uh, those who have served uh, throughout, uh, throughout our nation's history. Um, Second one is MWR hiring. Um, so you're going to hear a whole bunch from MWR tonight about uh, different uh, programs that we've got going, the opening of Birch Hill, the opening of the uh, ice rink, uh, other events. With that, we can't have all of these events open, or uh, venues open and events going without uh, personnel. And we have a lull of personnel right now following our summer PCS season. Um, we had a period of time where we were not able to hire folks because of some budgetary constraints, uh, big army wise. Um, and we've got permission to hire, um, but we're trying to catch up from the PCS season so we can get Birch Hill and, and the ice rink and, and all of these things going again. Um, so with that said, we have a ton of MWR jobs that are currently listed on USA Jobs. Um, we've been consistently doing uh, jobs fair, virtual hiring fairs, um, and we'll continue to do those. Uh, I don't have the date off the top of my head when the next one is, but we'll get that information to you uh, soon. Um, but if you are interested, you have friends, family that are interested in becoming part of the uh, U.S. Army Garrison Alaska MWR team, please go on to USA Jobs and, and take a look. Particularly if you're a, a ski patroller, that would be really awesome um, if somebody wants to come uh, do ski patrol for us. Um, and then finally, I, I, I've touched on this at different venues, but uh, ICE comments. Uh, we at the Garrison, we really, really do appreciate your, uh, your input uh, from, on ICE comments, whether it's in a positive or a, hey, you need to fix some stuff uh, piece of things. Um, I would ask that you continue to put those comments in, but I really can't say this enough. Please put your contact information so we can follow up and uh, one, give you some answers, but two, ask the ability for us to ask a little more uh, information about what you're sharing with us so we can really target, especially when there's issues, uh, we can target those issues and resolve them, uh, or we can very very clearly answer your question. Or if like you're saying, hey, some member of our team did a great job, um, we can come back in and ask you a little bit more detail so we can uh, effectively uh, recognize the members of our team for, for doing great things. So with that, um, I will turn it over to uh, DPW and uh, Ms. Jennifer Meyer. Thanks. Thank you, Colonel Ruga. Ms. Jennifer Meyer from Directorate of Public Works will discuss snow removal. Thank you, Linda. Good evening. I would like to take a minute and talk about snow removal on post. Snow removal falls into several categories. Those include primary roads, secondary roads, parking lots, airfield and gravel distribution. So let's talk for a minute about primary roads. Primary roads are cleared on post when two inches of snow accumulates. The contractor has 24 hours to clear those primary roads. So what that means is that sometimes those doing PT will experience snow on the running routes or the bike paths and also 
you as a driver may experience snow on the road while the contractor is trying to clear those roads. Some of those primary roads that you'll see cleared first include 10th Street, Chippewa, Montgomery, Gaffney, Sage Hill, Neely, amongst several others. Secondary roads and parking lots are also cleared as part of snow removal. Secondary roads consist of those roads not previously discussed, and they're cleared when there's four inches of snow accumulated on the roads, and the contractor has 48 hours to clear those roads. Parking lots. Parking lots are cleared one time a month between the months of December to March. Additional plowing can be done on a reimbursable basis. Should you need additional plowing, please contact DPW Customer Service. Also, hard pack is periodically removed in all organization and non-organizational parking areas. Airfield. Airfield clearing also occurs when two inches of snow has drifted or has accumulated. Again, this also must be cleared when, within 24 hours. However, there are designated emergency service lanes and those have to be cleared within eight hours when you have one inch of snow. Gravel is also distributed on the roads. This happens when we, within one hour of ice on the road surfaces or notification by DPW. It's also placed after the snow removal operations on the primary and secondary roads. Finally, it is noteworthy to mention that DPW contractor does not do snow removal in the housing areas. Should you have questions about housing area snow removal, please reach out to the housing partner. Over to you, Linda. Thank you, Ms. Meyer. Ms. Gail Murray from the Installation Safety Office will discuss winter safety. Hello, we're going to go over slips, trips, and falls this, day, this month. Um, we often forget how dangerous slipping and falling can be. A light, the light layer of snow or frost is often left even after the snow has been removed from the sidewalks and streets. Each year, numerous individuals are seriously injured from slips and falls, and you will inevitably encounter some slippery surfaces when walking here in the interior and on Fort Wainwright. Try these tips to keep your feet keep you on your feet this winter. You want to walk in designated areas and walkways as much as possible, taking snow, shortcuts over the snow piles and areas where snow and ice removal is not feasible um, or has not yet been completed can be hazardous. Look ahead of you when you walk. Um, a sidewalk completely covered with ice may require you to travel along a, the grassy edge for traction. You can use ice melt or sand on sidewalks and driveways at home and office entrances. If you don't have any ice melt or sand, try using non-clumping kitty litter. Again, that's non-clumping. Uh, if you must walk on ice, slow down and shorten your strides. Keep your hands out of your pockets to help with your balance and use handrails if they're available. You want to keep aware of your surroundings. Um, don't carry things in front of you. Wear a backpack or hold your items by your side to keep your view unobstructed and to lower your center of gravity. Walking like a penguin with short steps is the best way to walk safely on slippery surfaces. Um, you want to choose the right type of footwear. You want to choose footwear that will grip. Um, particularly in, or in the winter for icy conditions, you want to wear winter boots that have a good grip if they have a soft sole, it's just like your car. You need a soft sole or a soft compound for your, your soles. Avoid smooth or flat sole sh shoes and heels. These typically do not have good grip. Um, if you want to wear heels or flats at work, wear your boots to get to work and then have your, boots to ch or have your shoes to change into when you arrive. If you want to use regular shoes and just add your traction devices, you have do-it-yourself traction. You can help your shoes gain traction by intentionally scuffing up the bottoms. This works wonders, especially if your shoes are brand new. Um, you also have traction cleats, which are ice trackers, jack tracks, anything similar to that, that slip over your shoe. Keep in mind when using these and you step into a building or facility that has tile floor or a smooth floor, they turn into ice skates. You want to remove them as soon as you enter the building before you go walking down a hallway. Um, another dangerous place for slips and falls this winter is exiting your vehicle. Be, be sure to examine the ground before you leave your vehicle. Look for any ice, 
packed snow, anything that's going to hamper your foot having good contact with the ground. You want to maintain three points of contact when you're, when you're leaving your vehicle. Don't grab your objects that you're carrying, be it your coffee, your lunch, groceries, anything like that until you leave the vehicle. Reach back in and retrieve that after you have secure footing. Um, one final reminder, while weather conditions may cause floors to be wet or the ground to be snowy or icy, watch where you're stepping and use caution to keep your feet under you this winter. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Murray. Next up is Chaplain Check from the Religious Service Office. He will discuss the Holiday Assistance Program. Hi, good evening, Fort Wainwright. I'd like to announce the 2020 Holiday Assistance Program. The Fort Wainwright Religious Support Office, in partnership with DECA, uh, will be distributing commissary shopping cards and 170 Thanksgiving baskets at Thanksgiving and another 170 baskets at Christmas. Unit command teams should identify and nominate soldiers or airmen with families here on Fort Wainwright. Baskets will be available for pickup by command teams or by the unit ministry teams on the 23rd of November in the afternoon and then in the morning of 18 December. Units without a chaplain are in the process of being contacted by myself. If you'd like to donate, you can do that in a number of ways. One, you can stop by the Fort Wainwright Religious Support Office to donate, or you can shop at our commissary between now and December to sponsor a basket. If you'd like more information on that, you can contact your unit ministry team, or you can contact myself at the Religious Support Office. The other program that I'd like to announce is the 2020 Fort Wainwright Angel Chief Program. Every year, the Fort Wainwright Religious Support Office runs a post-wide Angel Tree Program. The program's designed to help the neediest children amongst our military community by providing toys. Unit command teams should identify and nominate military families with children and turn in the selected children's names to their unit ministry team. Names will be collected between the 16th and the 30th of November and are due to me by the 30th of November. And then during the first two weeks of December, anyone wishing to sponsor a child can select an angel tag from the tree at the Fort Wainwright PX and drop off toys at the customer service desk of the PX or at any one of the Fort Wainwright chapels. Presents will be passed on to the family's UMT or to a senior leader for delivery on the 22nd of December. And if you're looking for a suggested gift donation amount, it should be one gift of about a $25 value. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you, Chaplain Chef. Next, Mr. Chris Walney from the Logistics Readiness Center will discuss the Thanksgiving meal at the dining facility. Good evening, folks. The Striker Brigade is planning to execute the Thanksgiving meal on the day before Thanksgiving, Wednesday, the 25th of November. They're expecting to do the meal from 11 o'clock to 1700, and that will take place in building 3416. Uh, the SBCT right now is working on when soldiers and leaders will eat and serve. Uh, that schedule has not been published, uh, but they're trying to extend the meal out six hours. Uh, to mitigate COVID restrictions. And finally, while the menu has not been finalized, expect it to include all the traditional fixings that a Thanksgiving meal provides. Uh, while the meal is open to all, uh, because of COVID restrictions, it's really focused on uh, sustenance and kind soldiers at this time. Thank you, Mr. Rolling. Mr. Dan Kane from the Directorate of Family Morale, Welfare and Recreation, with We'll discuss Birchill and the Ice Rink. So for our 2020-2021 ski season, uh, we have some good news in that we're going to have one. COVID has not beaten us. Uh, with that said, of course, be aware that changes can come and be uh, short term, short announcements. Uh, right now, our plan, of course, is to open Friday, November 27th. That's Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. Uh, we intend to have some kind of pass, uh, season pass this year. Uh, we're looking at that very closely. Uh, we do have limited space as far as a warming tent while the lodge, the new lodge is being built, which is another um, good news story that the new lodge will be on for next year. Unfortunately, we don't have it for this year. Um, however, uh, we'll be able to have that warming space throughout this entire season. Okay. Um, <clears throat> right now, we do have some limitations. 
Uh, it's only going to be accessible unlike other years where we allow in the um, patrons from outside, from the general public. This year we are going to be restricted to those who can get onto the installation. So typically those with military IDs only. Um, we are looking at uh, doing, moving our uh, rental and pass sales programs. We don't have a specific location uh, chosen yet. More information will be available next week. We have uh, the 17th of November hard date where we're going to try to have all of the information, all the decisions, all those hard decisions made and out to the public. We will have all three lifts available, so the tubing section will be available. The brand new um, magic carpet that we put in last year will again be available for the youngsters this year. And the, even though we've had some issues getting it ready, the uh, chairlift will be available as well. So uh, look to your MWR website, <clears throat> sign up for the uh, text message services that are available, and watch for those announcements to come and to be solidified soon. The other good news story is our ice rink. Uh, we struggled over this one again due to COVID. However, we will and are putting in the ice. I believe it'll be finished next week, hopefully, uh, with the final touches going on the week of Thanksgiving so that we can have it open uh, for Black Friday again as well. Uh, the biggest change there, the biggest restriction we're looking at is right now due to COVID, we do not plan on having hockey available. So unfortunately, those guys who want to get out and you know knock each other down a little bit and chase the puck, uh, we may have to wait until COVID gives us a lull, maybe in the spring if everybody crosses their fingers. Um, we already have solidified some of the costs on that. You'll see that on the slide. Um, so feel free to come on out. We'll have open skating and we'll have lessons available. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kane. We now move to our agenda topics. Mr. Ian Tassie, Director of Family Morale, Welfare and Recreation, will present some updates on our MWR facility. Hello, Garrison, Alaska. There's no more resilient family than a military family, and November is your month. So we'd like to highlight some of the things that we're offering for the month of November. At Chena Bend Golf Course, it's not all golf, and in the wintertime, we have cross country. We have our golf simulator that's all year round, and this particular month, in November, we had one on the 5th through the 8th, but we have another one on December 3rd through 5th, and that's our Play with the Pro series. And as many of you know, the Masters is this weekend, and this is an opportunity to play some of those courses that the professionals play right on our simulator. We have cross-country skiing both at Chena Bend Golf Course as well as Outdoor Rack and Glass Park, and we also have a clinic coming up on the 14th and we have future clinics available as well and we will announce those on our Facebook site and our webpage. Nugget Lanes Bowling Center is going to host their annual Turkey Bowl where there's lots of prizes and lots of fun depending on how many strikes you get. And on November 28th our Outdoor Rec is going to do one of many snow machine trips, guided trips that we do throughout the, the winter season. You do need your snow, snow machine certification so be sure to ask about that if you are interested. Our Frontier Fitness Program is basically a monthly fitness program for our youth uh, and it's hosted by our youth sports and fitness and our December one is going to be archery and really what we ask you to do we've put all of the events for the rest of the year up there and what we ask is that if you want to register your child it's all virtual so it's really easy to do you go to Parent Central Services or you give them the call at that number below. Again, we wanted to highlight the cross-country trails at Chena Bend Golf Course. They will probably be groomed and open, ready to go on the weekend. As we all know, we had quite a snow event in the last few days. We want to make sure all that settled first and this fluctuating weather stabilized a bit, and then we're going we're gonna to pack all that down and groom it. Good news is it's free. If you want to rent cross-country skis and gear, we have all that available at the golf course as well in the pro shop. And, of course, the simulators, as we've mentioned before. And then Monday through Friday, we also have our fabulous restaurant, The Turn, uh, there to provide lunch as well. We are looking for our next Better Opportunities for Single Soldiers president. For those of you who don't know, our boss program has won the Pacific's number one boss program three times in a row. And there's very few venues that you can do where you have a, a bigger voice. And 
than being a boss president or a member of the boss executive committee. So I, serve, I strongly encourage those of you single soldiers, single with dependents, or geographical bachelors and bachelorettes to consider your role as possibly the president of our boss program. Um, big shoes to fill. We're, we're looking for our fourth win for the Pacific, but no pressure there. Soldier family and readiness groups are a vital ingredient at any installation, uh, really ensuring the readiness of our soldiers through our families and, and through that connection. So there's no better way to be a high-speed, low-drag SFRG member than to take these trainings. So please have a look at what we're offering. And for more information, go to the website. We do ask that you enroll in these courses. So please have a look, and we do these regularly so if you don't make it and it is on team so it's pretty convenient uh, we'll offer it another time as well we also offer personal financial counseling and regardless of of your station in life uh, our, our personal financial counselors always have some insightful advice for 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 any of us whether we're just starting uh, in our in our in our journey in our funds managing them by themselves or, or later on in life. It doesn't matter. There's plenty of stuff to learn, and our financial counselors are the savvy folks that can provide that information. So give them a call, Darren or Gian, Gianna, at the numbers provided. As the colonel mentioned at the top of this presentation uh, with the ICE comment system, another way that commanders empower the community is through the Army Family Action Plan. And so we strongly encourage you to leverage those, those recommendation forms, those AFAP submission forms, and they're located at Building 3401. You can also visit our website. But some of the things that we want to highlight is, are some of the things that the products that have come out of AFAP submissions and AFAP recommendations, like BOSS. So please give that a look and consider speaking. Our military family and life counselors are always available and we, we like to bring this up every time. Whether those of you think there's a stigma or not for seeing counsel, seeking counsel, the fact of the matter is it's, it's always nice to sound off to somebody uh, even if it's just venting. So that's what our military family and life counselors are there for. Really they, they cover a wide variety in their portfolio. So. If you just want somebody to talk to, or you got something specific or maybe not specific and just want to vent, we strongly recommend getting in touch with your military family life counselor. So the information is provided there. Finally, we're making this a December to remember, and while COVID is, is our reality for probably the rest of this year, uh, we're really excited about uh, what we have in store, especially our virtual tree lighting on December 4th. We have 12 days of prize giveaways in store, and there's lots of cool things like a Nintendo Switch, TVs, and stuff like that. So there are big prizes. Please remember to watch our website, our webpage, and our Facebook site for more information and participate to win. Wanted to also add that, as again the Colonel mentioned, the hiring fair is going to be on November 18th. That's a virtual hiring fair. You can apply online through USA Jobs, or if you want to participate on the day, you can have your resume ready, and we will post a, a central link in our Facebook page that you can send your resume to. And the virtual fair really facilitates a, a quick process, so we'll have all that stuff ready on November 18th and be ready to um, hopefully get some potential folks on board. I want to echo the Colonel's wishes on a happy Veterans Day. Thank you, veterans, for your service. Thank you, Mr. Tassie. Lieutenant Colonel Moore from Medic Alaska will provide us with some information for Bassett Army Community Hospital. Good evening. I appreciate the opportunity to highlight some exciting new changes and events that are coming up for helping you manage your health care. 
So first, I'd like to tell you about the implementation of MHS Genesis, which is our new electronic health record. This system replaces the previous system, which some of you may know as CHCS or Alta. Um, while this new system uh, will take a little bit of time for us to get fully rolled out, it offers some really great uh, features such as the new patient portable, portal. Sorry. Uh, this patient portal actually combines the perks of TRICARE Online and Secure Messaging. So please visit the website that's highlighted on the slide uh, to help you get signed up. Uh, this portal will provide you a one-stop shop where you can check your labs, check your x-rays, uh, talk to your provider, get your prescription refills, and beginning on the 18th of November will allow you to book your appointments as well. Uh, as we transition to MHS Genesis, we ask for your patience. As you may see a delay in some of our services, some extended wait times for referrals, and uh, some wait times in the pharmacy lab and radiology. If you have any questions or concerns, please we, can, we encourage you to continue to utilize the nurse advice line at 1-800-TRICARE or uh, the uh, PM Pediatrics at pmpediatrics.com. Okay. So next, uh, for those folks who are looking at making a change to their, uh, their TRICARE policy, the open enrollment season is now here upon us. So de de beginning on the 9th of November and going through the 14th of December, you have the opportunity to adjust your policy. Um, I would just like to highlight, though, that uh, folks should take some time, go to TRICARE.mil to learn more about what each of those policy options uh, provide for you. And if you're looking at uh, transitioning to TRICARE Select, please note that this also uh, may mean a change to your, uh, your travel coverage. So if you're used to receiving uh, travel, pay, lodging, food, these sort of things under TRICARE Prime, this would be something that you would not expect to be able to continue to receive. Okay, and finally, I'd like to just give you all an update on our flu uh, vaccinations. We are still at this point awaiting an update for uh, when we should expect to receive our adult flu uh, shots. We have not gotten those just yet, but we are still hopeful that we'll be able to make a mid-November to late November time frame for those to arrive. Uh, we do have on hand currently the pediatric immunizations, so please, if you uh, would like to go ahead and get your little ones their flu shots, just go ahead and walk on into our immunizations clinic. And that's all I have. Thank you so much. We uh, look forward to continuing to serve you. Thank you, Colonel Moore. Mr. Ron Johnson from North Haven Communities is here with information from North Haven. Hey, good evening. I um, wanted to run through a couple uh, events that we have uh, going on this month. Uh, one, which we'll talk about a little bit later, uh, is a promotion of our Rent Cafe resident portal. And that's really a portal that allows you to communicate with us uh, in a variety of ways. Um, but to try to get more people signed up for that, we've got some promotional uh, events around it. We've also got uh, three different programs going on. Over the month, Days of Gratitude giveaway, the Military Family Month giveaway, and the Gobble Gobble Turkey Dinner uh, event. So if you would, uh, go to our Facebook page, look at those, a great opportunity to win some prizes and uh, enjoy the holidays remotely. Uh, next slide, please. If you haven't noticed, it is winter, and uh, <laughs> these are maybe a little bit late, but we wanted to give you some winter readiness tips, just to, things to check to make sure that you've done uh, as we start uh, going into winter. The first one is if you still have air conditioners in your windows, uh, you should probably take those out and, uh, and shut your window, seal it back up. Uh, and then when you do that, throughout the house, go through and make sure that you, all your windows are closed and that you have them latched and sealed. Uh, that'll, that'll do a couple things. It'll save on some energy, but it'll also keep precipitation and frost from building up inside your house. Um, if you haven't already, hopefully you have, remove all the hoses uh, outside from the hose bib. And uh, I'll mention it now as we start to go into winter, and we already got a ton of snow, but you need to have a plan to pick up your pet feces uh, throughout the winter. Um, you know, metal garbage can out in the backyard works pretty good. Uh, but if you don't do that, what ends up happening is uh, when it's spring, all this snow that here is here now melts really fast, and you end up with a poop lake in your backyard. So uh, it's pretty nasty. If you just take care of it when it's frozen, it's easy to pick up, doesn't smell, and there's no problem in the spring. So please stay on that. 
Um, even though it snows and covers it up, you think you're all good, in the spring you won't be, So, and you'll be sorry about that. Um, if you got toys and stuff laying around or at furniture, yard outside patio furniture, you should really pick those up and move them before they get buried. And uh, of course, you know, as residents, you have to maintain your driveways um, and your sidewalks to your house. Uh, please stay on that as well. We do get a lot of snow up here if you just moved, and uh, it's a lot easier if you just knock it out every time it snows. And please don't shovel all your snow into the roadways. Um, just pile it up in your yards. That's more fun for the kids. Uh, and if you don't have um, shovels and ice chippers and things like that, we do have some of those as self-help that you can come and get. So check that out. Thank you. Next slide. And, and so but just to reiterate a little bit on the ResNet portal, um, this is a, we have an app as well as, as a regular hard site. Um, but this process, this program allows you to communicate to us. You can put in work orders. You, if, you're, if you don't already have a direct deposit set up, you can pay your rent uh, through this app. And, and you can do things like check on work that's been done. So if you put in a work order and we have permission to enter your home, um, you can take a picture of what the issue is and send it to us. Uh, we'll come and fix it and we'll send you back a picture after we've completed the work to show you that it's done. Um, it's just a good way to communicate. So if you would take time to sign up for that and allow us to better serve you. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Next up is Mr. Mike Durbin from AFES is here with information from the exchange. Good evening. So November kicks off the holiday season at your local exchange and I just want to give you some information on upcoming sales events and activities that are coming up. Starting with the Veterans Day, November 11th from noon to 1300, we'll be handing to all our veterans a commemorative coin. We do have very limited quantities on hand, so please come join us early. Uh, we, like I said, we'll start at noon, and I think we approximately have 20 to 25 coins we'll be handing to all our veterans. Also on Veterans Day, we have a buy more, save more, oh, I apologize, it's a 10% off all our clearance items uh, throughout the store. It's excluding firearms and ammo. So one day sale only, so come on in and enjoy the savings. Starting on November 16th, we're going to have a coloring contest uh, for our children. Uh, come up to customer service, pick up your coloring sheets, and then from November 20th through 25th, you can submit the uh, sheets to ZZWR, Fort Wainwright, Maine, at AFES.com. We'll select three winners, and we'll contact the winners and have them show up with their uh, colors and uh, take a photo of them. On Saturday, November 21st, we're going to hide a couple uh, t photos of turkeys throughout the building. Uh, if you find the turkey while you're shopping, please bring it up to customer service and you're a winner of a $25 gift card. And then on let's see, November 20th through 25th, we're going to have a week, our week-long firearm sale. In years past, it's always been a one-day sale, Black Saturday, the day after Black Friday. But this year, so we don't have a lot of people due to the pandemic that's going on, we're going to have a week-long sale, November 20th through 25th. You save 10% off your firearms purchase, and if you use your military star card, you'll save an additional 10%. So if you use your military star card, you save up to 20%. And then on Black Friday, November 27th, we'll be opening early at 0800 in the main store. The mall doors will open at 0700, and Starbucks will be open for your coffee and snack needs. So, next slide. Starting in December, uh, December 7th through 11th, we're going to have an ugly uh, Christmas sweater contest. Send us your photos to ZZWR, Fort Wainwright, Maine, at AFES.com between December 7th and 11th. We're going to select two winners, one male, one female, and we'll let them know that uh, who the winners are, and they can come in and pick up a $25 gift card for their, the winnings. On a one-day sale on December 19th, we're going to have a save more on clearance. We're going to have 15% off of a regular tender purchase, and if you use your military military star card, you'll save up to 25%, and we're going to exclude ammo and firearms for this also. And then for Christmas, we're going to have a coloring contest for ch children. Starting on December 16th, they can pick up their sheets at customer service, and then they can um, email them to us at ZZWR, Fort Wainwright, Maine, at AFES.com between December 20th and 23rd. So please come join us during the holiday season for more in-store specials, and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Durbin. Next up is Trent Jackson from DECA. He is here with information from the commissary. Good evening. Um, as always, we're going to have our holiday soda sale. Um, 
it'll be from the 19th to the 26th of November for Thanksgiving, and then we'll also be doing it for Christmas from the 18th to the 31st of December. Um, we're also having, in partnership with the exchange, the uh, Your Holiday Bill is on Us sweepstakes. So if you use your military star card, you get automatically entered in, and there's prizes from they'll pay off your whole balance of your military star card. Um, second place is uh, $1,000. Um, so it's, it's pretty cool what they're doing. Um, also, uh, shoppers can find DECA and AFI's gift cards sold at the commissary as well as the exchange for last minute gift ideas. We're also going to be partnering with the Religious Support Office uh, to do 170 holiday food baskets. So stop by the commissary, you can sponsor a basket. Um, I guess that's it. Thank you and thank you for your service. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. That concludes our agenda for this evening. Colonel Ruga, do you have any closing remarks for our community? I do. Th uh, thanks, Linda. And thanks for all of our uh, speakers that came and shared information tonight, but especially thanks for uh, members of the community who watched and uh, hopefully learned some information about the community. One thing I would ask is that if there's information that uh, you would like us to share in these uh, events uh, that you maybe didn't hear tonight, um, and so that we can kind of uh, adjust and target it to our, to our audience, uh, please put a comment in and we will uh, try to target that for, the, for future info X's and uh, hopefully get the information that you need to you when you need it. So thank you very much. Thank you, Colonel Ruga. Join us next month for December's Arctic Community Information Exchange on 15 December at 1800 hours. Use the ICE link shown to let us know how we are doing. Please ensure to include your contact information when submitting a comment. Thank you and have a great evening.